The Tasman series in the 1960s brought the world's best drivers and teams to Australia and New Zealand each summer. Jack Brabham, Jim Clark, Graham Hill, Chris Amon, Jackie Stewart, Jochen Rint, Piers Courage, some of the notable drivers, and Lotus, BRM, Ferrari and Brabham, regular visitors from 1965 to 1969. It was a state of the art. There was no, there was no problem. You, you got the Jimmy Clarks here, Jock and Rince, the Mayers, people that were already vying for the World Championship were out here for about a thousand pound start money and a little bit of prize money and came out for the environment, for the holiday, for the hospitality, uh, for the tracks. I mean, by today's standards, none of the tracks would have complied safety-wise. Uh, Jackie Stewart hadn't started on his crusade, Lou Stanley, we, we didn't have neurosurgeons, doctors at tracks and, you know, there were a few things in place, but as opposed to the professionalism that's available today, it was just a non-existent thing. It was very much an amateurish sport driven by people that were paid to drive. For local drivers like Kevin Bartlett, Leo Gagan, Spencer Martin, Greg Cusack and Frank Matic, the Tasman series was an opportunity to see how good they really were against the top internationals. Yes, that was uh, the most equal type of racing that uh, was around for us Australians, of course, was the fact that the cars were all virtually the same. Uh, albeit that uh, generally the Australian drivers had last year's car, but the last year's car wasn't all that far behind uh, the latest and greatest, as it were, until the Cosworth engines come along, it made a little bit of difference. Uh, but yes, we were on. A, we had a lot of good races actually uh, with the champions of the time, and uh, we weren't disgraced. <laughs> The 1966 Tasman Cup Series started with four events in New Zealand. After a run of bad luck competing in these races, we were determined to do better in the Australian Series. At Warwick Farm, we fielded four cars, the two Alfa Romeos for the Series Production Touring Car Races and a one and a half litre and a two and a half litre Brabham for the big race. Frank Gardner is to drive the Alfa Romeo GTA and Kevin Bartlett will drive the TI Super in the first event of the day a five-lap touring car race. Our main opposition proved to be Max Falkers in the Lotus Cortina. Away they go, and the pack screams into Paddock Bend. Gardner immediately opens up a long lead over the field. The big battle lay between Bartlett and Volkers. Gardner is well in the lead. But Volkers has now passed Bartlett. Gardner wins. Volkers is second, Bartlett third. Gardner set a new class record, averaging 80 miles an hour on the two and a quarter mile circuit. Now we're down to business for the big event. Glen Abbey checks over Gardner's two and a half litre Bradham. Jim Clark's Lotus is wheeled out and he has pole position on the grid. Gardner had done extremely well to be third on the grid. Another world champion, Graham Hill, was in second slot. Our new boy, Kevin Bartlett, receives final instructions. Whilst Gardner makes his own adjustments. We had hoped to run the Bradham Maserati, but it wasn't advanced enough, so we put Gardner in our spare car, which we obtained from Big Stilwell. The cars are pushed started. Here is Graham Hill. We started Gardner on the two-minute signal. 
Wait for it. Here they go. Wow, a terrific start. Off the line, it's Clark, Hill, Stewart, Gardner, and the rest in a tight pack. Clark leads on the first lap. Gardner is fourth. Bartlett is ninth behind Martin in a two and a half litre. Gardner settles down to a steady race. Bartlett is doing very well in the one and a half litre class. Clark now has a good lead, followed by Hill in the screaming V8 BRM. Gardner holds a steady third place. Bartlett keeps up the pressure. Clark is really going to win this one. Hill is trying hard, but is 10 seconds behind. Gardner is steady, a further 25 seconds away. Bartlett is right behind McDonald's two and a half litre car. Coming up to the causeway, Bartlett has now passed McDonald. This is a good spot to watch the experts in action. Hill slows down for the causeway. Followed by Gardner and now Brabham. Bartlett coming up. Unfortunately, he is to retire in a few moments with a broken shaft in the gearbox. Back in the pits, we are busy keeping our drivers informed. Glen Abbey on stopwatches. Bartlett walks up, having left his car out in the field. Before retiring, he was lying second place in the one and a half litre class. Jim Clark gets the flag to win the International 100. Followed by Graham Hill, Frank Gardner in third place. Clark comes in, a happy man after the slowdown lap. Johnny Harvey steps out as Gardner comes in. We were in this mob, but got our shot first. Graham Hill unwinds after the race. Jim Clark has won at Warwick Farm for the second year running. Whilst the presentation goes on, the retirements are brought in. The winner takes off for his lap of honour with his mechanics and Sally Stokes. Back in the pits, we discuss the race. It was not generally known that Gardner had had severe brake trouble throughout the race, and here our mechanic, Stuart Randall, is checking them. At Lakeside for the Australian Grand Prix, we reduced our commitment to three cars, the two Brabham's and the Alfa Romeo GTA for the touring car races. They certainly seem to enjoy promotions in the Sunshine State. In practice sessions, Gardner had circulated in 55.8 seconds, only one-fifth of a second slower than Hill in the BRM. Gardner was driving the Brabham Climax faster than its previous owner. There were two 10-lap heats before the Australian Grand Prix to sort out final grid positions. Both our cars were in the first heat. The field took off with Gardner on Hill's tail and Bartlett in the one and a half litre right behind Martin's two and a half litre. Bartlett drove well to keep up with the two and a half litre cars. Hill took the flag followed by Gardner four tenths of a second behind. Bartlett came fourth in the heat behind Martin's two and a half litre Brabham. Not many girls racing these days. Here's Carol Palmer in a Sprite. The next event for us was a 20 lap touring car race. Gardner pilots our Alfa Romeo GTA, here followed out of the pits by Gagan's Mustang. The Mustang had pole position, but was slow off the start with Bob Jane's Lotus Cortina leading Gardner in the GTA. The Mustang soon overtook them, leaving Jane to fight it out with Gardner in third spot.
Alec ran our pit single-handed whilst we prepared the racing cars. The Mustang rocked away in the lead, leaving Gardner to drive a copybook race behind Jane in the Cortina. There was no hope of catching the flying Mustang, but Gardner continued to drive smoothly, waiting for Jane to make a mistake. The Mustang was circulating the one and a half mile course in 65.1 seconds. Jane in 67 seconds, Gardner one tenth of a second behind him. It was all over for Jane when he missed a gear change on the last lap and Gardner pounced on him to collect second place in the race. Naturally, we were very pleased with the result and so far everything was going well for us this time. Now for the big race, the Australian Grand Prix, over 66 laps of the short and tight circuit at Lakeside. Graham Hill was on pole with Jackie Stewart alongside. Gardner was on second row alongside Jim Clark. Bartlett on fifth row had qualified with a 58.7 seconds lap, only three seconds slower than Graham Hill. Final moments for the drivers. Gardner in our Brabham. Hill in the plumb position for the start. Jackie Stewart alongside, having won the second heat. Jim Clark still a force to be reckoned with, despite carburetor troubles. Further down, Kevin listens carefully to advice from Alec. Advice he is to put to good use in the race. Now for the start, and away they go. The two BRMs are leading neck to neck. First time round, it's Stewart, Hill, Clark and Gardner. Martin, Palmer, Gagan, Cusack and Barker. And the same fight pack in the second lap. Down in the pits, team manager and staff are on the job. The leaders again, with Gardner sitting pretty on Clark's tail. Bartlett is driving well just behind Palmer, Gagan and Cusack, allowing them to fight it out whilst he conserves his car and energy. This is a long race and anything could and does happen. Gardner sits behind Clark. Stewart still in the lead. Bartlett in the one and a half litre Brabham. Stewart, with Hill just behind him, was now seven seconds ahead of Clark and the ever present Gardner. Here Bartlett is about to be lapped by Stewart and Hill. Now the leaders are ahead of Bartlett, racing an exalted company. The V8 VRMs make a wonderful sound at Lakeside. Bartlett continues to circulate smoothly. Gardner continues the good work in the two and a half litre. We thought we would try to follow the cars round the carousel. Here's Jim Clark. Jackie Stewart still in the lead going round. Bartlett shows his skill on this corner. Gardner cornering smoothly and neatly. We went down to the pits to find that Stewart had just retired with his gearbox split wide open. Jackie Stewart was most upset. More retirements. Gagan and Cusack had collided in the eastern loop, leaving Bartlett now in a commanding position in the one and a half litre class. Graham Hill now leads the race. Bartlett leads the one and a half litre brigade. Graham Hill is now comfortably in front. Clark is beginning to slow, which is our chance. Bartlett is driving the race of his life. Gardner is putting the pressure on, through in company with Bartlett. The teamwork is beginning to show results. Oops, 
Somebody up the track. It's McEwen and he's open. Spencer Martin's car has just retired, outed by a fourpenny spring in the fuel pump. Foxy Frank Gardner has now passed Jim Clark and is lying in second place. Graham Hill wins, followed by Bartlett, two laps behind. Gardner second, Jim Clark third. Bartlett comes in, fifth overall, first in the one and a half litre class and first Australian driver in the field. The winner arrives, followed by Clark in the Lotus. Motor noter Mike Cable accompanies the jubilant Alec Meldon team up from the pits. Frank Gardner has driven a very well judged race to finish second. Alec congratulates Kevin Bartlett on his magnificent performance and the announcer grabs Kevin for an interview. Jim Clark and Glen Abbey exchange views on the race, whilst our two and a half litre Brabham is swamped by an admiring crowd. The winner of the Australian Grand Prix for 1966, Graham Hill, comes in for the presentation proceedings and here he is receiving his cup. The last race of the day was a 10 lapper for touring cars and this was a walkover for Frank Gardner in the Alfa Romeo GTA who led from start to finish. The Mustang and Bob Jane's Cortina were not eligible for this event. Frank takes the flag to conclude a very satisfactory day's racing for the Alec Mildren racing team. Now for Sandown Park, Melbourne to continue battle for the Tasman Cup. Gardner was now fourth in line with 16 points, his best position so far. Jack Brabham made his first appearance in the series and his new car attracted a lot of interest. It was fitted with the new two and a half litre V8 Repco engine designed and made in Australia. We tried the Brabham Maserati in practice but it was still not satisfactory so back to the faithful Brabham Climax now fitted with a short stroke engine. The dummy grid is tucked away in a corner of the field and it's a long walk to it. The day's event started with two six lap hits for the racing cars to determine final grid positions. Brabham's new car is the centre of interest. Gardner and Clark are still good friends despite their shunts in New Zealand. Bartlett drives up with his mechanic, Bob Grange, on his tail. Jackie Stewart is destined to win the event and clinch the Tasman Cup. Graham Hill is due to have a race-long battle with Jim Clark. Jack Brabham is destined to retire early in the race with too much oil pressure. Gardner will finish in fifth position after driving another steady race with an engine down on power. In the sixth lap, Stewart and Clark lead Hill. Clark coming around, followed by Jim Palmer. Jackie Stewart, Graham Hill, Frank Gardner. Jack Bradham puts a squirt on and sets a new outright lap record for the track to beat Stewart to pole position. Now it was the turn of the one and a half litre cars to do battle for grid positions and this little six lapper was almost as exciting as the big race. We went down to Peter's Corner to watch Bartlett fight it out with Dagan and Harvey. The cars come hurtling down pit straight and have to break hard for Peter, the tightest corner on the circuit. Bartlett shared a new lap record for the one and a half litre cars with Leo Gagan. The next event for us was a 10 lapper for touring cars under 2000 cc's and we entered Frank Gardner in the Alfa Romeo GTA.
the pace was fast and furious with McEwen and Moffat leading Gardner. But the two leaders were penalised a minute for jumping the start, so without busting ourselves, we took first prize in third position. Well, that's one way to win a race. The organisers had invited the Governor-General to start the big race and Lord Casey duly arrived driving his own car. His Excellency was introduced to the officials of the meeting. Whilst the drivers left the dummy grid and drove round the track to the starting grid. Lord Casey showed intense interest in the proceedings and asked to be introduced to the drivers. He was introduced to each one in turn. Now it's Frank Gardner's turn. And Kevin Bartlett as well. His Excellency stopped for a few words with world champion Jim Clark. At the start, Lord Casey hesitated in dropping the flag and Jack Braddon shot forward to lead Stuart and Clark into Shell Corner. First time round, it was Braddon, Stewart, Clark and Hill in the lead. Frank Gardner was seventh in the early stages. The new short stroke engine was not giving the extra power we required and he finished in fifth place. Kevin Bartlett had troubles with the fault in the gearbox which caused him to pit four times. He finished eighth overall and third in the one and a half litre class. We had our troubles too when our camera jammed soon after these shots and that was the end of our filming for the day. Jackie Stewart won the race and clinched his hold on the Tasman Cup. Jim Clark came second after a race long battle with Graham Hill who came third. One and a half litre cars were not invited to Longford, so we only took two with us, the two and a half litre Brabham Climax and the Alfa Romeo GTA. We tried changing the gear ratios to squeeze more power from the reluctant short stroke motor. Oops, they were hot. On the Saturday, there was a 10 lap event for the two and a half litre cars. Stewart won this race, followed by Hill, Clark, Palmer and Gardner in fifth place. Also on Saturday, there was a six lap of the touring cars. We entered Bartlett in the Alfa Romeo GTA and he started on pole position. He had a great battle with Moffat in the Cortina but held him off to win the race. In the meantime, we tried new valve springs on the Climax engine. On the Monday, we entered the Alfa Romeo GTA in the Australian Tourist Trophy, a lengthy event over 23 laps of the four and a half mile course. Unfortunately, we suffered a blown head gasket and that was the end of our effort in this event. However, a bit of team effort and we had the Alpha repaired in time for the last race of the day when Bartlett came second to Moffat. The cars line up for the final round of the Tasman Cup. Despite a poor start by Graham Hill, it was a benefit for the BRM team with Jackie Stewart winning. Hall second, Brabham third and our man Gardner in sixth slot. Jackie Stewart receives his garland and the Tasman Cup from the Tasmanian Premier, Mr. Rees.
We enjoyed the events in this year's Tasman series. We're very grateful to our drivers, Frank Gardner and Kevin Bartlett, and to Glenn Abbey and his team of mechanics who made these results possible. Alec Mildren Motors were Alpha importers and it was very important from their point of view that the product, their product that they were selling, was exposed in, in the correct manner. And of course in those days they had very, very good little touring cars, the little GTVs, 1600s and the uh, little GTA, the aluminium version of that was a fabulous car. And we used to get out there and knock off the Mustangs and the Minis and all of that sort of thing with that lightweight Alpha. Um, sports cars, the TZ2 Alpha, uh, which was uh, uh, virtually of only two or three of them in the world. And uh, th that was a good car. We ran that in the 12 hour at Surface Paradise. But touring cars, yes, we mixed it quite well with, with the touring cars of the day. Um, I remember Bathurst race with the little uh, GDA against uh, Bob Jane's Mustang, a 1600 car against 4.7 litres, and we knocked him off. It was unbelievable.